In this tutorial, we're going to talk about using uh, Corel Photo Paint's Cutout Lab. So what I'm going to do now, I'm, I have a photographic image, and I'm in Corel Draw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select my photograph, and I'm going to click Edit Bitmap. This is a really, really quick way to automatically export your uh, bitmap-based image into Corel Photo Paint. So of course, Corel Draw Graphic Suite comes with Corel Draw and Corel Photo Paint and it's striking how oftentimes uh, people aren't aware of that. So you have professional photo editing software. So what we're going to do now that we're in this environment is I'm going to go to the image drop-down menu and the very first option says Cutout Lab. What I'm going to do is make that selection and you'll see we have our photographic image in a new uh, sort of uh, panel here. Well there's really, this is a two-step process. Step number one is to select this tool where my mouse is now hovering which is the highlighter tool. And what we want to do is we want to highlight the area around the object that we want to cut out. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and highlight the area. And I'm not taking too much care to highlight that area, and I'll show you why. Uh, so I'll go ahead and continue to outline the specific area, and that is acceptable. So what we want to do now that we've outlined the object is we want to take the Inside Fill tool. So we're going to first outline the area. Then we're going to take the inside fill tool and we're going to left mouse click one time inside of the area that we want to preserve. So the next step is to preview this. So I'll go ahead and select preview and you'll see our cutout in a new window. Now recall I wasn't so concerned with, um, you know, with really refining the edge of the area that I want to preserve. And especially in this example, and I chose this on purpose, because uh, the skin tone in the background shared uh, sort of a, a, a monotone. So what we'll do now is I'm going to go ahead and maximize this window so we can see full screen. Um, there's really two processes here. You'll notice how a lot of this, uh, or some of the file, got cut out. So I want to reinstall or reinsert those pixels, and then I want to go and clean up some of the area. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use two tools. There's a plus and a minus tool, so a remove and add detail. Now you can toggle back and forth very quickly by using the A function, so you'll notice if I hover my mouse it says in parentheses A and R. So A for add and R for remove. So if I click add, I'm going to go ahead and left mouse click and I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and you can see that I can go and add in those pixels. So the whole photograph, believe it or not, is still here. We've just created essentially a mask around the area that we um, we wanted to trim out. So you'll notice if I bring my mouse into this area, all of the object is still there. Now, of course, I can hit R on my keyboard and have the opportunity to go and remove detail from, from a specific area. So this is where you're going to want to spend a little time to refine the edges. You're also going to want to take the time to change the nib size of your tool. Now, a quick way to do that, you'll notice on screen my uh, nib tool or my, uh, my brush is sort of expanding and contracting. So what, here's the process to do that because it's a lot easier than going over here and readjusting your nib size, say entering 10 to get a smaller nib. So what I'd recommend doing is holding down your shift key, left mouse click, and what I'm when I'm holding down the left mouse button, I'm just moving my mouse up and down. So hold down shift, left mouse click, and go up and go down. And you'll see how my nib will go ahead and reduce and uh, expand in, uh, in, in retrospect. So what I'll do now is I'll go and zoom into a specific area and I'll go and activate my add tool and notice it's really small so I can go into a specific area and I can go and eliminate pixels from that specific area. So definitely take the time to adjust your um, the size of your brush and that will give you the opportunity to really really go in and do some of that detail work. So once again I'm going to go and zoom in this area, hold down shift and go up and I'm going to click A on my keyboard and add some of this detail back into uh, the photograph wherever it's relative. So you really aren't going to make mistakes because if you do happen to delete too much detail, we can always come back and add that back in. So we'll go back in here and just add in some of that detail. And of course, we're zoomed really far in, but as we zoom out, you know, you're not going to see that level of detail. So we'll go back in here and add some detail in here and refine some of these edges. And when you're satisfied with the way this file looks, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click OK. And it's going to sort of teleport this design right back into Corel Draw, or excuse me, Corel Photo Paint. And from this point I can continue to make edits. If I'm not satisfied with something, you see how this is sort of a freeform object. So I can reduce the size of it, I can add effects and continue to make modifications. In fact, I can use some of the uh, photographic editing tools that are available in Corel Photo Paint. Uh, for example, where my mouse is now hovering, uh, we can use the touch-up brush, 
uh, the clone tool, which is a great tool to eliminate any kind of uh, imperfections that you might have in a photograph. In fact, let's pause to talk about the clone tool because I think this is a really exciting tool. So now that the clone tool is uh, selected, what I can do is go and zoom in here and see the bags underneath the eyes, the little teeny bags, discoloration. I'm going to hold down the shift key, I'm going to left mouse click, and I can con control and constrain the size of my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample an area. So I'm just going to left mouse click. And it's basically taking a snapshot of that particular area. So notice if I go into this part of the, the photograph, I'll zoom in here a little further, um, I have the opportunity to just left mouse click one time. And do you see how it took the snapshot and then sort of transplanted it onto the air, other area? Now, of course, that doesn't look appropriate, but you want to take the time to uh, carefully sample and clone your specific region. Now, I also want to uh, draw your attention to this drop down menu. Once you activate the clone tool, you have the opportunity to go in here and do a, a big soft cover or, say, a medium soft cover. Um, so, there's a lot of different presets for cloning. So, you can even create your own custom clone and save that. So in this case we'll do a um, let's do a big soft cover. So this is going to take a, a bigger sort of sample of an area. So I'm going to go and shrink this down, do a soft cover and I can come back in my region and see how that's a little more delicate. It's not so uh, obtrusive. So there's no one right setting for your project. It's just really relative to whatever you happen to be working on. So of course we'll have some future tutorials about the power of Corel Photo Paint because there's so many great features available to you to help not only in photographic editing but also in the creation of digital effects and digital imaging.